And you turn, we've got who's sitting with us? We have two special guests sitting with us. We actually have Tyler, who is a patient here at Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital. And then we also have Sam, who is a child life specialist. And we brought you guys in together because the connection that the t your side of the hospital working has with the people that are being treated here is a bond that we all notice the minute we walk in the door. And Tyler, how old are you now? I am 19 now. You're 19, and you are battling chronic myeloid leukemia. Yes, ma'am. And now, how, how long have you been dealing with this? Um, I was diagnosed when I was 13, so I got to do some math here. So, um, six, six years. Yeah, too long. That's the way it would, yeah. most people would be like, whoa. Now, you come in on a regular basis for treatments, and people like Sam that are here with a child life, Explain to everybody who's never used the hospital, and especially those that maybe who are like, oh, I'm never going to have to go there. What does Sam and her team do for you? Oh, you have no idea. So when I was here in the hospital, I was always like, okay, I need to keep myself occupied. Because then once you're battling cancer, a lot of times you can't really do the things that you would like to do. So I remember one time I got introduced to Sam, and Sam's like, hey, I'm child life. You know, anything that you need to make things fun and all this stuff, like, just let me know. And I'm just like no problem i have to take advantage of this so <laughs> i was talking to sam and um sam like had my room like hooked up like my room was the spot and i had like an xbox in my room um my friend brought all his video games i had so many stuff in my room like different toys and stuff so like i was very occupied in my room and it was just like instead of it feeling like a hospital like i felt like i was right at home and and we got to make this very clear. All these things that we're talking about, I know they're like, what? Why does a kid need an Xbox in a hospital? It's distraction. And that's what it's for. And you know what? That's where the, those are one of the little things that your money can go to is to help with those distractions. So I'm going to go right out and give the number just so, because I want people to have that picture in their head. Yeah. 954-602-5437. Now, I have to ask Sam, though, is there ever a time where you walk into a kid's room and there is just gloom and sadness how do you handle that honestly i have more days i think where they're more resilient than you think there's definitely days where you know it's just kind of crummy and they're just down but um they tend to cheer up pretty quickly especially when i walk through the room so um because we bring back those items that help normalize their experience while they're here in the hospital to help like you said distract them to help them forget that this is a hospital so those things are so important and we incorporate play throughout our entire therapy and throughout the entire hospital just to kind of make that um fluent throughout throughout their stay now tyler how often are you at the hospital well it used to be when I first got out of the hospital, it used to be like every like two weeks, but now I'm like every three months just to monitor everything, make sure everything's okay. And sometimes like I'd be feeling so well sometimes I like I forgot that I would have to come. Like today, like I would I ended up leaving my appointment today and I ran into Sam and Sam's like, Hey, do you wanna talk on the radio? <laughs> yeah, I wanna talk on the radio. <laughs> and so I, I honestly, like, forgot that I had to come. So I came to my appointment late, and I'm just like, oh, my mom's not going to like this because I go by myself now. But I just, I don't have to come as much. But then every time when I do come here, like, I'm just reminded, like, hey, this is my family. And, like, they have my graduation picture in the office. And I'm just like, oh, that's me. And, and like, that's it's just awesome. it's that sort of feeling. Was there ever a time, though, that you just thought, I just can't do this anymore? Honestly, I've always been a very positive person. So, like, if I did think about it, like, I would get over it. And I think the only time I felt like that was when, when we first got, when I first got my diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And my mom means, like, the absolute, like, world to me. She actually works in the hospital. I called her before. I'm like, Mom, I'm going to be on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> so, around that time, like, once I got the diagnosis, like, my mom seemed more upset about it than I did. And I'm just like, oh, this is serious. But then... Right after that, it was just not like, okay, I need to be positive for me, but I need to be positive for her also. Because then, as a mother, like, all you want is for your kids to be healthy and be at their very best. So the fact for her to see me not in that state kind of devastated her. So, like, ever since seeing her in that position, I was just like, I'm going to battle this. I'm going to make it. And no matter what I do, I'm going to stay positive because I know she wants to see me, like, up here. So I've always been pretty 
positive about it. And you've also had a great team to help keep it positive. I've had a great team. We're like a dream team in here. Good like, job. <laughs>